Number 19. Which atoms can bond to sulfur so as to produce a positive partial charge on the sulfur atom? Okie dokie. All right, so in here, we have a bond, right? And it's all about sulfur in this case. So we have sulfur, and it's forming a bond between some sort of atom. I'm just going to put a box here, and I'm going to say atom. Okay. Now, remember that we're not saying whether it's a covalent bond or an ionic bond per se, right? So I'm just going to erase this and just put like a interaction. So this space is going to house the two electrons that sulfur is going to be interacting and reacting with this certain atom, whatever it is. Now, the criteria was that we wanted to put a positive partial charge on the sulfur atom. Now, there's a notation for this in chemistry. Positive partial charge looks like this little weird symbol, which is like a dipole, and then we just put a positive there. So they're telling me that Sulfur has to have a partial positive sign, which looks like that. Now, if sulfur is partial positive, that means that whatever the atom is has to be partial negative. Now, what does that mean? These symbols come directly from electronegativity. And we know what electronegativity is, right? Electronegativity is just basically an atom's attraction towards electrons in a certain bond. So the higher the electronegativity, I'll just put EN here, the more attracted, the more it's going to want to pull the electrons to itself. So the higher electronegativity, the higher the attraction for electrons. So the more pulling it's going to do. Now, the higher the electronegativity, the more partial negative you are. It's all about being negative, right? Electronegativity, right? Electronegative, attraction for electrons which are negative, and that's why it's partial negative. So in this case, for this atom to be partial negative because they're stating that sulfur is going to be the partial positive, that means that this one, whatever the atom is, has to be a higher electronegative atom because sulfur has to be the less electronegative atom, mainly because it is the partial positive. Which means that when these electrons are divvied up, the electrons will be pulled more closer to the atom that is the higher electronegative negative atom, because it has the greater pull, it's more greedy. The higher the number, the more greedy it is to get that electron. That's all that it, it's saying. But now we just basically said the answer. The answer to this problem is whatever the atom is that has a higher electronegative number than sulfur, right? Because technically if sulfur is partial positive, it has to be the lower number. So let's see, sulfur is over here. Sulfur has an electronegative number of 2.5. So technically this atom, whatever it is, just has to be greater than 2.5. So let's look. Well, it could be nitrogen because nitrogen has an electronegative number of three. So if I just erase this word atom and I say that this is nitrogen, it would check out because nitrogen has a greater electronegativity than sulfur. Also, oxygen would work out because oxygen is 3.5. So let me write all these down. So I'll just put them over here. The atoms could be... Nitrogen, because nitrogen is higher than sulfur. Oxygen, because oxygen is higher than sulfur. It's a 3.5 as opposed to 2.5. Fluorine would work, because fluorine has 4.0. Chlorine would work, because chlorine has 3.0. Um, let me see here. And I think that's it. Now, the reason why I'm not going to include bromine in this is because these... If they formed a bond here, this would actually be lower than 0.4, and that is a pure covalent bond. So they wouldn't produce a partial positive or a partial negative. So here are your atoms. It is nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine, and I don't think I missed any other one, and yeah, those would be it. All right? 
So it basically broke down to which one had a higher electronegativity to form a polar covalent bond. And remember, polar covalent bond, the electronegativity difference has to be between, I believe it is 0 0.4 all the way to 1.8. So if you subtracted sulfur and bromine, 2.5 and 2.8, you would only get a 0.3. That's not in this range. So that's why I won't include it, all right? But you got four other atoms, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine, and that's it. So this one is done, all right? So thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Click the subscribe button if you want all the answers in your feed. And yeah, I'll be providing more. I try to go as fast as I can. I will see you guys all in the next question. Have an awesome day.